So I think it's safe to say that 2020 is going to go down in history as the year that nobody had planned. Things were different, it wasn't as scheduled, but that doesn't mean that there weren't a lot of positives that came out of it. So rather than focus on the things that we didn't end up doing, I'm going to focus on the things that I did do. So one of the early highlights for me this year was speaking at my first ever career day. One of my clients teaches at a local high school and invited me to speak to the kids that are going to be graduating either this year or next year about what it means to be a real estate agent and maybe offer some advice to those considering that as a career path. Some of them were just glazed over, but there was definitely one or two who were interested. You could see by their face, you could see by the way they leaned in to listen to me and by the way they phrase their questions and what questions they ask. So for me, that was a really good moment and something I was excited to do in terms of giving back to the community that supports me. Selling real estate became a little bit more tricky because in-person showings became a little bit more difficult. Public open houses were not really feasible in the first couple months of lockdown or the pandemic, and so we had to adapt. I hosted my first ever virtual open house through a combination of Facebook Live as well as screen shares, along with 3D virtual tours that we'd already programmed or already taken for the properties we had listed. That was a really big change and a really big accommodation to the situation that we had at hand. And I was really proud of the work that I did there. I changed brokerages this year, which was I wasn't really excited to do at the time. I felt kind of forced into it, to be honest, through the, the situation that COVID presented. However, when I look back at it over the course of the year, it proved to be a really good move. It provided me a bit with a reset uh, from both my business and just home life in general, the home, you know, home life work balance. And it's been a really good move and I wouldn't have made it had COVID not happened. So it's one of those things that um, COVID was a blessing and a curse. And in this case, it proved to be uh, a bit of a blessing for me. I got to homeschool my kids for two months. Yes, that sounds like a weird statement as I'm talking about it, like that's a really good thing. There were definitely days where I was pulling out my hair and things were not going according to plan. However, I got two more months of my life with my kids, which I wouldn't have otherwise had. They're at school for roughly six hours every day, Monday to Friday. That's extra time that I got with the kids that I would not have otherwise had and it's all because I was sort of forced into it. So again, it's one of those silver linings that you think about it and it's not what you want, it's not what you planned, but it proved to be a really good thing. That coupled with the fact that all their activities were canceled, we weren't just blitzing around on weekends and rushing from place to place and activity to activity. It wasn't just time with the kids, but it was calmer time with the kids. We got really nice weather in the spring and so they were outside for four, five, six hours every day. We were really fortunate to be on a cul-de-sac with great neighbors that had kids their age. They all cohorted together and we essentially had just an amazing spring summer because of the neighborhood that we lived in and the fact that nobody was going anywhere and kids basically had a summer very similar to how you know my wife and I grew up in the 80s where you're out all day till the lights come on on the street, you're playing on the dirt, you're climbing trees, you're playing tag, hide and go seek. It was really, really positive um, and not really something that we can recreate all that easily. If it weren't for COVID, my YouTube channel certainly would not have started when it did. I was in need of some social interaction and I had thought about doing a YouTube channel, but I hadn't really figured out what it was going to be or how I was going to start because I had a fear, have a fear of being on camera. Through COVID, I realized just how much social interaction I get accidentally or unintentionally through my job. And of course that wasn't happening because of how things work. And so I had to be intentional about reaching out to people. And that's where the idea for interviewing people came from. And I also thought that if I was going through that, other people were gonna be going through that and that maybe they could benefit from some of the conversations that we had. I always benefit from listening to other people talk about the pros and cons in their life. And so I hope there's some takeaways from all those interviews that that uh, people did. For the first time ever this year, I cut my hair that was not just a buzz cut. I actually tried to cut it in the regular style that I have. Some would say it didn't look all that great. 
yeah, it was okay from the front. It was almost like a styled mullet. So it is what it is. Everyone had a COVID cut. Not everybody, but a lot of people had COVID cuts. Another thing that happened this year is Zoom happy hours. I just put it out there and I was amazed at just how many random people from my Facebook account that I hadn't talked to in a while would just sign in just because they're missing that interaction. And that was something really cool. I thought that even though we were all locked down, we were all suffering the same thing and all needing that, that same human interaction that we all sort of came together as a bit of a community, even if that meant coming together online. So I was really, really grateful for that. Got a lot of things done around the house. I think our neighborhood is looking as good as it ever has. People's landscaping was taken care of, home projects were taken care of. It was amazing to see people out and about and just taking care of the things that were on the back of their lists for so long because everything else got in the way. Because we couldn't really travel and do the things we normally would do, we had to improvise. And so we discovered a number of hikes around town. We enjoyed them. We're gonna do more next year. And yeah, I, I, I thought it was really good. You know, it's kind of funny because I'm thinking about the YouTube milestones that I've reached this year. And the first thought that I have is I kind of want to preface it that if you're a large YouTuber, YouTuber, these won't mean as much to you. However, every large YouTuber started as a small YouTuber. And so hopefully this can take you back to the point of, oh yeah, I did start somewhere. And the other thing is watching a video recently by Peter McKinnon. He's a YouTuber that I follow and not just a YouTuber. If you don't know him, look him up. Even if you're not interested in photography or video making, he's super entertaining and super inspiring. In the video that I was watching, he reminded us that it's much easier to criticize than it is to create. And I found that very early on when I got involved in YouTube that people will give you a thumbs down or a negative comment just because, and it speaks more about them than it does about you. But that's tough to remember sometimes. When you turn that camera on and you put yourself out there and you want people to like you, you want people to get something beneficial from the videos, it's hard to remember sometimes that you are putting yourself out there and that it is easier to criticize than it is to create. So to all the keyboard ninjas out there, I just wanna say that these YouTube milestones that I've had this year are really important to me and I'm super pumped about them. In no particular order, really, I've improved myself. I've gone from this view to this view to this view. My lighting and camera skills have gotten a lot better, in my opinion, maybe not everybody's, but they have definitely improved. I've gone from next to no subscribers to over 100 subscribers, which to me is super awesome because it means that I get my YouTube name or YouTube custom URL and I was able to actually secure my name, which is super awesome to me. I had my first video go over a thousand views just recently, which that's just mind blowing to me. I know there's videos out there with millions of views and it happens overnight, not really, but it does sometimes. But a thousand views to me was huge because when I posted on YouTube for the first time, I was averaging zero or one view per day. And now I'm averaging anywhere between 30 and 40 views per day, which is also really incredible that I've made it into the YouTube search algorithm, that people looking up certain things are being shown my videos. And that's something pretty cool. I don't know if they're helpful. I really do hope they are. And the other thing is I'm not 100% confident on camera yet, but I'm getting more comfortable. And that to me is probably the biggest milestone that I've had this year that I'm just, I'm, I'm more comfortable in my own skin on camera. So thank you for watching and thank you for being a part of that journey. I really appreciate it. Oh, the other milestone that I hit on, on YouTube is I set a goal of posting once a week, every Thursday. And since I started posting, I haven't missed a single posting date including today's video. My wife was telling me the other day that when I set a goal that I have incredible willpower and I just do it. I don't always feel that way, but it was, I kind of was filled with pride with the fact that someone I care for and admire and love so much actually recognized that in me 
even more than I do sometimes. And I think that was an important milestone that I, I didn't miss a single day. That said, 2020 was not the year we all planned, but there was a lot of good that came out of it. And I'm super excited for 2021, whatever it may bring. Anyways, that's it for me for the day. I hope you liked the video. I hope you like any one of my videos or even 10 seconds of one of my videos because it means that it was worth doing. If you have any questions or feedback, put them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next year. Thank you.